Hello everybody and welcome. <laughs> anyway, um, pretty much doing this for me, but here's the thing. Uh, you can get morph animations or keyframe animations from uh, Blender into Unreal Engine 4 quite uh, easily actually. Hardest part is the blueprint. Um, this for instance did a cube going into a sphere and uh, let's see here, spiky ball. Spiky ball is cool. Spiky ball, always cool. But anyway, this uh, I'll show you in a moment. Key things. Okay, we've got Blender here. One, you get done with your, uh, your mesh. Make sure you unwrap the UVs. Always a good thing. Alright. Um, when you're done, okay, with your base mesh, how it's going to appear to begin with, you can come over here to the uh, data display, and where it says shape keys, you add two. The basis, that is as you see it right there. The next one, uh, you can add three, four, you can add plenty of them because it keeps the key names. The next one is going to be the next bit of uh, uh, vertus movement, shall we say. But you must remember to rename it to something that doesn't have a space in it. So if you want to keep with the naming conventions of key 1, 2, 3, 4, just make sure you put an under underscore in place of the space. Okay, now that we got that, with that key selected, we go ahead and go into edit mode. Um, we'll go ahead and, uh, oh, forgot. Well, just for simplicity's sake, we'll go ahead and just uh, move a few verts around. Just for shiggles. Alright, and now go back in object mode you see it's is there now with key one selected the value here sweet okay now that we have that leaving our mesh selected we go ahead and go to file export FBX okay selected objects where it says normals only select face uh, otherwise the Unreal Editor will bitch about it and your uh, lighting will be screwed up. Also the UV mapping is so you can get, have good shadow mapping uh, so we can build the, the lighting. Alright and let's see here Unreal Projects for Project 3 content testing. And we will name that Toot Cube fbx now if you have the unreal editor up and running once you click on export come back to it it will find it now on the import options we want to import it as skeletal and we want to import morph targets okay now once we have that we can go ahead and click on import all you can't find the bind pose but that's okay now uh, let's see here where to go where to go there it is there's our toot cube when we bring this up as you can see oops forgot one important thing uh, with flat shading it's really uh, it's really weird apparently uh, with morph targets Unreal Engine does not like flat shading. So, we'll go back into Blender, turn the shading to smooth, re-export. Sorry about that, I didn't mean to. Uh, and we'll come back in here and it'll tell us that it processing source file changes. Beautiful stuff. Now when we come in here, there we go just like we want it 
Well, I mean, as much like we wanted as we can. Now, in the documentation uh, with 3ds Max users, whenever they uh, bake their morph into it, they only get three, so or uh, two two morphs per static object. Uh, I haven't worked out how to. Uh, well, I got a couple things worked out. But anyway, on to the blueprint. Okay. Now, what we'll do is, in order to make our first blueprint for this, we will just drag and drop our test cube that we just brought in here into the, uh, into the level. And then right here where it says blueprint add script, we'll click it and uh, we'll go ahead and put it in the testing. We'll create the blueprint and there's our test cube blueprint open it up come over here to event graph which it gives us a couple of cool things here to begin with but unfortunately we're not going to use any of those all right what I'm going to do is I am going to copy and paste a previously done blueprint setup and we'll move this over this way so we can actually see what's going on here anyway first things first you're going to want to add an event hit or uh, break hit result and uh, these two should come in together all right and from there we'll add a branch okay with a condition uh, we got blocking hit condition and the exec going running through there and uh, we're going to add a timeline in our timeline, never mind this top one, but we have to add a uh, a curve. Uh, I used a float track, and uh, what I did with it is you just adjust it to this. This throws out a float uh, right here. It adds a new uh, output. That output will end up going to the set morph target okay and when you add the set morph target it also adds a skeletal mesh component so just leave that alone you want to have the output from update go into the exec on the set morph target all right now in order to get this to work every time or reset whenever i shot it I uh, threw a set simulate physics in there. Um, that also adds a skeletal mesh component for the uh, for the target, but it gives us a cool little thing here, which doesn't work like I wanted it, but it gives us a simulate simulate boolean. Um, if you have it on after the first hit, after the first animation gets through, whenever you shoot the object, it will, uh, it'll move. Uh, it's kind of wonky because it's using ragdoll physics apparently. But anyway, that is the output from timeline finished is going to the exec on set simulate physics. The output from set simulate physics is running back here to set new time and the new time goes to zero um eh, we'll just leave it alone we'll go ahead and compile it come back to first person map and uh, i wonder probably don't need to that's a spiky ball thing there but yep there we go now, of course, uh, shading's off a bit there on that, but whenever you hit it, 
it does its thing. And as you can see, the ragdoll physics are kind of wonky on that. But it does do like it's supposed to. And like I said, if you don't want it to move, you just undo the uh, simulate, recompile. So I've got mine to set up to save it. Uh, go to play. And now, every time you hit it, it moves. Well, that's it. Hope I was uh, able to help out if somebody was looking for something like this. Thank you.